Good afternoon and welcome to the Midday News. Here's what we have in the bulletin. Human rights group Stand Up for Jamaica wants compensation for unconvicted mentally challenged people in lockups. Father and son killed, daughter hospitalized in Portland crash. And later in sports, a Jamaican athlete receives a two-year anti-doping ban. Thank you for joining us. I'm Shane Masters and here are the details. The issue of persons behind bars for decades without conviction is, being, is back under the spotlight. It comes after another mentally ill inmate was released by the courts after almost 42 years after being classified as being unfit to plea. Karen Simpson has the details. Freedom at last for one inmate who has been detained since 1982. He was arrested and charged for murder but deemed unfit to plea based on medical information presented in court and therefore was kept in prison for almost 42 years. His name has been withheld due to the nature of the case. The man has been temporarily released to family members under strict instructions. Executive Director of Human Rights Group Stand Up for Jamaica Carla Galata is reiterating calls for several elements to be considered when detaining mentally ill persons. The ma major one is, according to our opinion, somebody which is mentally ill should not be detained, should be diverted to an institution where his disease is somehow cured. Put them in a prison does not make any sense because they are not fully aware of what they did. She says specially trained officers should be assigned to these persons at these specialized institutions. Ms. Galata also believes that once mentally ill persons are in conflict with the law, they should have the right to reach the courts and be sentenced for the offense. Those people that we are talking about since five years, uh, they never had the possibility, the chance to have a fair trial. She says they got lost in the system during the transition of the Governor General's portfolio over to the courts. Ms. Galata says it is challenging for those inmates who are eventually reintegrated into society and therefore she's calling for compensation for these individuals. Not all the families have the possibility to financially support uh, treatment, cure, attention, etc. Therefore, the second step which I want to introduce here today is all those people are entitled to compensation. And compensation can be something which can help the families. Karen Simpson, TVJ News. A Portland community has been left in mourning following a fatal motor vehicle crash, which claimed the life of a six-year-old boy and his father. The man's daughter has been hospitalized. Details in this report. Easter Monday is the day many families go to the beach for enjoyment or just a drive out. And it was the same for 53-year-old David Woolery and his son Jaden and a three-year-old daughter. However, the return trip home was interrupted with tragedy. About 10.18 p.m., Mr. Woolery and the driver of a red Toyota Corolla reportedly left a bar and were heading to a cook shop meters away. The driver of the Corolla attempted to overtake Mr. Woolery's Suzuki Swift but hit the back of it, resulting in the vehicle overturning and crashing into a shop a few meters below the roadway. Marie, who lives at the location, says she had just finished purrs and was heading to bed when she heard the commotion. So I fly up off the bed and run and I look up in the dress, I broke up the glass there, I was trying to just get away because I thought the vehicle was coming into the house. So then I realized um, they, they came in, I called out to my mother to see if she was okay, I reached her hands up. So I came out to the door and hoped my daughter said, Javani was okay when I opened the door, it was pure smoke, I saw the car in the yard. Giovanni, one of the first responders at the scene, says he had just left the location some three minutes before. So you weren't at home at the time, but you came and saw it. I left like three minutes before the whole accident. So I was, uh, I was, guys, I was almost there. It's really terrible. I've never really experienced anything like this before. Never. I've seen it on TV, you know, and I was wondering about how many people they feel. They don't know if they actually have it happening right now. It's terrible. Not a good feeling. It's a good feeling. 
Up to news time, Mr. Woolworth's daughter was still being treated at hospital. Over in Manchester, one man is dead after the car he was driving overturned along the Royal Flat Main Road about 7.15 Monday evening. He has been identified as 21-year-old Nicardo Scale of the neighboring land settlement community. According to the police, Mr. Scale failed to negotiate a corner when his Toyota Markix overturned. He was pronounced dead at hospital. The parliamentary opposition says the decision by the government to defer the 16% fare increase for transport operators further highlights the need for a national transport plan. The implementation of the fare increase was initially scheduled to take effect yesterday, but it was delayed following a meeting last Thursday involving Finance Minister Dr. Nigel Clark, Transport Minister Daryl Vaz and other officials, as well as members of the Transport Operators Steering Committee and other transport sector leaders. Dr. Clark explained the need to maintain inflation in single digit in order to keep the economy on course, noting that the transportation sector has one of the largest impacts on inflation. Opposition spokesman on transport, Mikhail Phillips, says the transport sector is suffering due to lack of adequate action from the transport ministry. We are now seeing our fourth minister of transport and after eight years, I'm still waiting on that national transport plan. Uh, we've just seen ad hoc movements. The minister himself opened up the licensing for hackney carriages in the KMTR months ago. When we ask what is the plan, why it is that you have done that, we have not been able to get an answer. And I think that the sector itself is suffering from not hearing of a, a plan on how it is that the government um, is going to, to save the investors that are, have invested in the sector itself and, and how it is that we're going to offer something more to the commuters. Transport groups will this week propose short-term incentives to the steering committee. There is no new date for implementation of the increase. Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Labor and Social Security, Colette Risden, is addressing concerns about grants that are being issued to young persons on the PATH program. Speaking at a town hall meeting recently, Mrs. Risden says that the ministry issues one grant to persons from birth until they finish high school. She says no two types of grants are given for health and education. Mrs. Risden explains that the program operates as a transitional cash transfer. We say we want the children to be healthy because you can't learn if you're not healthy, right? So we want the children zero to six must learn. So we want the children zero to six to ensure that they're healthy. And so one of the requirements of PATH is that children zero to six must go to the health center and get their vaccine immunization schedule and their well baby clinic visits. And so that's how we have the health, right? And then you have children, once they're in school now, then they get the support to ensure that they continue school. Meanwhile, Minister of Labor and Social Security, Pernell Charles Jr., says the ministry continues to reassure beneficiaries about plans to improve on areas within the program that need strengthening. You are a part of the transformation because some of what you said here now has already shifted my thinking okay. has already shifted my thinking and reiterated some of the concerns that we heard elsewhere so it's not the minister it's the team okay. it's the family it's all of us that's why you're a part of that transformation and we are human beings so everything might not be perfect but what's the word we keep on using improve and that's where we want to be. Chairman of the St. Catherine Health and Sanitation Committee, Sidney Rose, is urgently appealing for the Chief Justice Brian Sykes to fast-track the process to create municipal courts across the island. Mr. Rose says the court is needed to address potential breaches in areas like St. Catherine which are poised for major developments. He also explained that the creation of municipal courts would reduce the burden on parish courts. Because... It's not a want, it's a need. It's an immediate need. And you would have seen in the news at times where, you know, we have these challenges in Kingston and other parishes and St. Catherine being one of the fastest growing in terms of development and structures. It is warranted now. 
And it's time for a break here on the Midday News, but stay with us. More stories when we return. Welcome back to the Midday News. The managing director of the Jamaica Social Investment Fund, Jacef Omar Sweeney, says cleanliness is top priority for residents of inner city and low income communities. The JSF boss says this view has been expressed in all the communities the organization has worked over the years. It's why he says so much focus is placed on solid waste management when intervention initiatives are started. You know, we can't go in and talk about building infrastructure and changing behavior and working with, with persons if the place is not clean. And so we really devise with the community some of the issues, proper dump sites, ensure that solid waste have bins to throw it in, that persons understand proper signage, where you put the garbage, that kind of thing. And so it's an important aspect of how we deal with the physical upgrades of the community. After we've gotten that somewhat established and the, award, the wardens are established, then we can get into other programs like curfew monitors and dispute resolution, other social services, and bringing other agencies to work with the community. Mr. Spini was speaking at a recent award ceremony for close to 80 environmental wardens. The men and women are trained in solid waste disposal practices, which increases the number of local personnel who can help enforce anti-littering laws. Actually train them to become gazetted as, if you will, uh, licensed persons who can issue tickets for persons who litter or dispose of their solid waste improperly. And so today they're actually now have graduated or they can now, under the law, issue these tickets, which is important for them to maintain their role in the communities. But really it's about building the capacity of the communities, building the capacity of persons in Jamaica to work in really what is an important field. And it's now time for the Business Minute. The body managing the affairs of Stocks and Securities Limited, SSL, says it has transferred more than $15 billion worth of local securities and cash to clients. SSL, in a notice published in the Sunday Gleaner, says as of March 15, it had transferred local securities valued at $14.6 billion and cash totaling $635 million Jamaican dollars for 245 clients. The notice says SSL is no longer processing local transfers of securities. Meanwhile, SSL noted that the process to liquidate overseas securities and have the funds transferred to clients is underway and is expected to be completed by mid-April. According to the temporary manager for SSL, the next and final phase will involve the transfer of promissory notes held by clients which were issued by SSL-related companies. This will be subjected to the financial conditions of the SSL group. Further afield, Google is set to delete billions of user browsing records to settle a $5 billion privacy lawsuit. The tech giant will also switch off third-party trackers by default and notify users when their data is being collected. The 2020 lawsuit centered on Google's incognito mode. Plaintiffs accused Google of collecting millions of users' data without their knowledge while they were using incognito mode. And that's it for the Business Minute. Time now for the top regional and international stories. In the region, Guyana's political opposition has declared its disapproval for the government's decision to import foreign workers to fill healthcare positions. The Opposition People's National Congress has stated that such a move belittles local workers while opening the door for corruption and political manipulation. And we head to a quick break. When we come back, Jermaine Brown will have your midday sports report.